TDP, thermal design power, is a crucial factor that impacts performance and the gaming experience on portable devices. It represents the maximum amount of heat that the system can dissipate during intense use, directly influencing the speed of the processor and graphics card. As such, it's worth analyzing how this occurs and its consequences, and that's the subject of today's video, so let's get to it. The number of cores means how many physical cores there are within a CPU. Most of the modern CPUs are multi-core processors, meaning they contain more than one processing unit or core. Common configurations include single-core, dual-core, quad-core, octa-core, and even up to 64 cores in some high-end processors. The number of cores determines how many tasks or operations it can run simultaneously. This is beneficial for applications like big data analytics and machine learning, where multiple calculations happen at the same time. So the higher the CPU core count, the more individual tasks can happen simultaneously. However, just because a CPU has more cores does not automatically mean that everything will run faster. The performance depends on how well the software can use the additional CPU cores and also on the nature of the task being performed. Here's an example of an AMD Ryzen 9 CPU, showing that it has 12 cores. An example of an Intel i9 CPU, showing the number of cores to be 24 for this type. Now, clock speed or frequency means how many operations a single CPU core can complete in a second, usually measured in gigahertz or megahertz. For example, 2 gigahertz means 2 billion times per second. You will often hear a couple of terms related to clock speed. A base frequency or base clock speed is the speed or frequency at which the CPU generally operates without any performance boost. For example, if your CPU has a base clock speed of 4 GHz, it will always run at this clock speed normally. A boost clock speed, and also called the turbo speed, is the temporary higher speed of the CPU that can operate when a heavy load is placed on it. A higher clock speed typically means the CPU can process more instructions per second. However, there are a few points to consider, the number of boosted cores. Not all cores on a multi-core processor necessarily run at the same clock speed. In some cases, different cores have different speeds. Sometimes the clock speed of a multi-core CPU may fluctuate within a single unit. That happens when CPUs boost the speed of some of their cores briefly to manage intensive tasks. And if too many cores are being boosted simultaneously, it can cause the CPU to overheat, and to prevent the CPU from overheating, some multi-core processors may actually reduce their clock speed, and this causes some variation on how fast CPU can process instructions. Using the same example of AMD Ryzen 9 CPU, showing the base clock speed is 3.7 GHz and the maximum boost clock is 5.4 GHz. Now let's talk about the cache. The CPU cache memory is a small, extremely fast memory used by the CPU to store and quickly access frequently used data, usually measured in kilobytes or megabytes. If the CPU were to fetch every instruction or piece of data directly from the memory, it would spend a lot of time waiting. So cache memory can temporarily store the data needed by the CPU to increase the speed of data retrieval. Using the same examples, the cache size of this Intel CPU unit is 24 megabyte. And for the AMD Ryzen 9 CPU, it's showing the cache memory size for each level. In general, larger cache sizes can contribute to better CPU performance, particularly in tasks that require large amount of data to be repeatedly accessed. However, larger cache sizes can sometimes introduce slightly more latency, meaning it might take longer time to search for specific data. The power efficiency indicates how much power the CPU consumes relative to its performance. One key indicator of a CPU power efficiency is the thermal design power, or TDP. This is the theoretical maximum heat generated by a CPU that its cooling system is designed to handle, usually expressed in watts. The number of the thermal design power varies for each device. Laptops versus desktops, for example. And in the examples here, you can see the value of the TDP for this AMD Ryzen 9 CPU is 65 watts. And the same for this Intel CPU. 
The TDP is 28 watts. The TDP on handhelds can be set automatically to adapt to the demands of a particular game, or you can change it manually. Setting a high TDP will allow the processor and graphics card to operate at higher speeds, providing better performance in more demanding games. Setting it to low will limit the speed of the processor and graphics card to reduce heat and power consumption, resulting in lower performance, especially in games with heavier graphics requirements. Remember that a high TDP generates more heat, requiring an efficient cooling system to avoid overheating and throttling, which is the reduction in speed to control the temperature. A lower TDP reduces the heat generated, reducing the need for a robust cooling system, but can limit performance in games that require more processing. So, in summary, if you want more performance, opt for devices with a high TDP to get the best experience in demanding games, but be aware of the higher battery consumption and the need for an efficient cooling system. If the priority is portability, opt for low TDP devices as they offer greater portability and battery life, but may have lower performance in heavier games. As an example, the Steam Deck has a variable TDP between 15W and 28W, allowing you to adjust performance and temperature according to the game. The Ioneo 2, on the other hand, has a TDP of 28W, ideal for AAA games with high graphics quality. Finally, the GPD Win Max 2 has a 15W TDP, prioritizing portability and battery life. TDP is just one of the factors that influence the performance of a portable gaming device. It's important to consider other aspects such as the type of processor, graphics card, RAM, storage, and cooling system. The ideal choice will depend on your needs and priorities, as discussed above. So that's it folks, thanks for watching. Consider subscribing and see you in the next video.